what we're going to do is create a disintegration effect using Houdini. The effect consists of three parts. The actual object disintegrating, which in this case is a sphere, a series of spikes that form while the object disintegrates, and similarly a series of crystals forming during disintegration. So you merge them together and you get the final result. So to begin we're going to take a simple sphere, make the radius about 2 and convert the primitive type to polygon and increase the frequency to about 15. The entire effect primarily runs off an animated turbulent noise. So that is the most important thing in the entire effect. To do that, we need a warp sop. Connect your sphere to the warp sop, jump in, and take a turbulent noise. Connect the point position to the turbulent noise position. In the turbulent noise, set the noise type to Perlin. Lower the roughness to about 0.1 or 0.2 and connect the turbulent noise to a ramp parameter. And the ramp parameter will drive our point color attribute. And at this point, you should be able to see a turbulent noise on your sphere. Now we need to animate this going from black to white. For that, I'm just going to reverse the ramp colors and we will animate the point positions. So take the black point, frame 1, we'll alt click, come to something like about 120 and just move it all the way back. If your auto key is on, it should set the second key automatically or you can alt click. And similarly, we'll take the white point, come to about 20, set your first key and then go to about 140, move it towards the other side till everything becomes white. And that's it. So that gives us our basic animated noise map. The second step is to displace the sphere using this noise map, for which we will require another warp sop. So rename the first one to noise map and the second one will be displace. So connect the warp sop to the displace. Extract any one of the RGB values from the point color attribute using a vector to float. So connect the point color attribute to the vector to float and take a displace along normal and drive the displacement amount using any one of the components. It will give the same result. So we'll connect the red and then use the first one which is displace point position to the output point position and you should see this. Now along with this, I would also want to reverse the existing colors because we're going to use that to drive the scaling of the polygons. So take a fit range, 
connect the red component to the input value and reverse the destination minimum and maximum. So minimum becomes 1 and maximum becomes 0 and output that to point color attribute. So your ramp will effectively be reversed. So once this is done, the rest is relatively simple. Uh, firstly, we need to separate all the polygons. So take a facet node and switch on unique points. So if you come to smooth shaded, you should see individual polygons. And then take a primitive SOP. Switch on Do Transformation, right click on Scale X, copy the parameter and drive Scale Y and Scale Z using that. So it effectively gives you something like a uniform scale. And drive the scaling using $CR. So we're going to use the red channel from our color value to drive the scaling. and if you press enter and press play and you should essentially see this. So that covers our first part of the effect. Now we need to generate the spikes. So in order to do that, we come back to our displays and what I would like to do is convert is to modify the existing colors from going from black to white to something like a band so it goes from black to white and back to black and in order to do that we're going to require another warp shop connect the displays into the warp shop we'll call this band and do the same thing so just extract the red channel from the color attribute, take a ramp parameter, connect and drive your color. And then just adjust your ramp to look like this, which is black at the beginning and end and white in the middle. And then just squeeze it till you start seeing something along these lines. So there you go. Now once you've done this, I want to get rid of all the black polygons and in order to do that, I'm going to use a delete and drive the delete by expression use dollar cr and do delete non selected and that will just leave you with the white polygons and if you want a, a little bit more of the shading you can multiply the dollar cr with a slightly bigger number so you will get to see more polygons now, once you've done this, we uh, basically need to repeat the same thing that we've done here. So I'm just going to copy these two and connect them here. So we get the band forming and then disappearing. Okay, now we need to convert these into spikes. So in order to do that, we need to drive a poly extrude using these colors. Now we can't really do that directly because the color value at this point is a point attribute and we will need to promote it to a primitive attribute. So take an attribute promote and specify original name as color, original class point, new class primitive. Now if it turns to black you don't need to worry because this seems to be some kind of a display issue. Uh, but if you go back, if you apply a poly extrude now, 
the color will essentially come back and we'll drive the z value using dollar cr and there you go you have an extrusion running based on the color data now scale these down to about say point two and if you want a little more randomization we can multiply this with a random dollar PR but that's up to you and if you merge these together at this stage we'll just give it some color as well so we can make the spikes red and we can make we can make the primitive let's keep the primitive white so connect these two together and there you go you have your effect now the last thing we need to do is to create a series of crystals which sort of form along this now what I can do is I can just duplicate this so I can have a secondary band which can be a little larger and what I want to do is just uh, is firstly create some normals so my crystals will align to the sphere so just add a point stop and do add normal and then we're going to scatter some points on this I'm just going to increase the display size so we can actually see the points now if you'll notice it kind of tends to start flickering that's because it's essentially based on primitive area so turn off primitive area and you'll find that it stops you know doing that and then I want to get rid of all of the darker points so just take a delete again and instead of deleting primitives we delete points non selected and the same thing so delete by expression dollar CR into 5 and there you go that just leaves us with a set of brighter points and if you wanted to spread a little more I can just sort of adjust this so it tends to spread out a bit more okay then we require a platonic solid use an octahedron a slightly smaller radius and copy it onto these points scale them turn, turn off transform cumulative and scale them based on the color value again so you'll find a series of crystals so we can just adjust the size a little more and then give this a color as well so I can use maybe like a really dark red and connect it and there you go that is our final result